So, I'm making this video because I think we should make things that we know. Addiction is something I spend a good deal of time learning about from many different perspectives. Hopefully what I have to say will be interesting to the people who have never experienced addiction in their lives as well as those who have either in themselves or in someone close to them. In some ways, this will touch on the topic of dualism that I mentioned before in my video about mental health and the stigma it bears. This is not an argument for any particular ideal solution or philosophy. I may make a video in the future explaining my thinking in these areas because I've thought about them a lot, but for now I want to stick to the foundational concept of what addi addiction is and uh, how it makes it more subtle than most people would expect. My primary goal is to help addicts and not addicts alike, or non-addicts alike, better understand the psychology that makes it so difficult for us to recognize addiction in ourselves. It's not a mistake that 12-step programs have as their first step, their foundation, uh, admitting that you have a problem. Too often our misunderstanding of what addiction is leads us to fail to see it in ourselves even when it becomes obvious to people around us. Um, this video will probably get long. Um, I could talk for days on the subject, so I'm going to be making a very real effort not to overreach here in this video. And it's likely that this will become a multi-part series, either because I go over time saying what I want to say on this, or because you know, if I get a uh, good response from people, people want to hear more about what I have to say on the subject, I will, of course, you know, try, try to give more of my views in the area. So, why is addiction uh, difficult to recognize in ourselves? The common concept of addiction is that it is a controlling influence in our lives. Uh, that when you are addicted to something, you are not in control of your own actions. And this is just a destructive concept uh, that I believe is patently false. Addiction is as simple as desire, and its base is an over-amplification of exactly the same mechanism. I'll do my best to defend this position in this video. Most people will have a hard time accepting this for a few different reasons. One is that many people will, who have suffered addiction will claim that uh, what I'm saying blames the addict for their disease. And yes, addiction is a disease in the DSM, uh, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Um, and the other reason that people, or another reason why people might reject this is that others having experienced addiction will tell you that they have continued their drug use um, long after they stopped wanting to. They will tell you that they wanted to quit but could not and kept coming, being drawn back sort of to use against their will. Uh, we should be suspect of this claim because it implies that it is possible to will one thing and have your body act on its own to accomplish something else. I will leave the first of these two issues for the moment and address the second. Um, the issue that uh, can we ever find ourselves in a position where we have no control over what I call macroscopic choices. Um, by macroscopic choices, I refer to things like opening a door, uh, getting yourself a glass of water, uh, making a phone call, or speaking coherently, you know, using, using words in a coherent manner. Um, and this is different from uh, things like involuntary twitching or paralysis or shaking, which, of course, could be involuntary. My experience and all the evidence I'm aware of indicates that the answer is no. We cannot have these sort of directed acts without some kind of direction, which would be our will. And to suggest otherwise really calls for us to believe that the body and mind are not only separate, but that the body is capable of acting on its own uh, judgment, since, there, since the only way there can be what we would describe as an intentional act without us willing it is that if there is more than one agency active in our body, specifically this extra intentional agency must be able to have goals and act in, the int and act in their interest since the likelihood of random muscle movement or muscle spasm causing us to call someone or to speak coherently is essentially zero. So anyway, what's difficult about self-assessment? Why, why do addicts have a hard time seeing the addiction in themselves? As addicts, we assess whether we are addicted to some substance or activity by introspection, usually. But because we believe addiction is a, condi a condition of lacking choice, and we always experience choice being available to us, we do not judge ourselves addicts. Instead, what has happened is our mechanism for making choices has been subverted, or at least reprogrammed. Specifically, the means by which our brain registers reward for an activity, or perhaps more importantly, the way it associates an activity with interest or pleasure, is designed to change with input. We are learning creatures, and our ability to change connections in our brain 
is this sort of activity, that that's what makes us able to learn. When we discover some activity we enjoy, our brain associates pleasure with that activity in our memory, and importantly uses dopamine, a neurotransmitter, to register desire and motivation. Some people will say pleasure, but uh, more recent research has shown it a uh, much better connection with motivation and desire for dopamine. And I'm going to link at least one study uh, describing sort of dopamine's role in our anticipatory response and motivation. The progression of addiction is not registered by an individual as a decrease in individual control of action, but rather is registered as a stronger and stronger anticipatory response to some given action, whether it be use of a specific drug, overeating, exercise and or weight loss, or anything else really. A drug addict does not find themselves unable to choose their family over their addiction, rather they find themselves sure that using their drug of choice is the best idea because we all respond very faithfully to the programming in place in our brains. They choose their addiction over everything else because in time the pathways associating pleasure and motivation are so thoroughly linked to their addiction that they cannot help but see it as the most important part of their lives. This seems like it should be a simple problem. We humans like to see ourselves as rational thinking beings in control of our emotions. And this idea is silly, I think, because it ignores so much of common experience. Who can say that they logically like food that tastes better, despite it being uh, nutritionally deficient, or that their relationships are based on logic? These aren't logical choices. These are sort of emotional associative choices that we have. Um, and there are some truly compelling examples of this sort of thing, but I don't have time to do them justice here. The point I'm trying to make is that our logic lays on top of our emotional desires as a means of fulfilling the desires offered by emotional response, which is why addiction appears illogical. It is not that the person has, some, has become incompetent. It is that their competence has become aimed at fulfilling their addiction. It is insanity not of method, but of goal. Um, it is not that a person who is paranoid cannot understand how to make themselves more safe. It is that their paranoia is insanity in terms of the, their understanding of the very world that they're responding to is where the irrationality comes in, not their uh, method of response to it. That may be a bad example because, I mean, clearly there are some counterexamples in that specific area. But in terms of addiction, the insanity is not um, how people go about trying to get drugs. The insanity is that getting drugs, in the case of drug addiction, has become the driving force in their lives and has become more important than most any other consideration, and especially in some cases where you see people commit extremely extreme, extremely extreme acts to uh, feed their addiction. I think from all this is clear enough how I view the addict's complaint that I'm blaming them for their own addiction. I'm not making value judgments. I'm observing that it is an underlying problem of brain chemistry and connection that drives our choices. Understanding that fact is what makes it possible to choose recovery. This covers most of what I uh, wanted to put in this first video. I'm explaining addiction as something other than a simple shackling of free will. Of more general interest, perhaps, I'm suggesting that people consider where their motivation truly comes from. It is our emotional context that our logical mind seeks to act on. So fundamentally, we are emotional beings, with logic being a tool to accomplish goals, rather than logic being the top of an imaginary pyramid of consciousness. So hopefully, this will at least spark, spark conversation or be of interest to somebody. Um, like I said, I'm making it mostly because I think we should, you know, it makes sense to make videos about what we know about. And uh, this is something I spend a lot of time thinking about in my life. So anyway, thanks for listening. See you later.